Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I'm going over how to choose a perfect planner. I know that there is lots of content being put out currently heading into the 2025 planner season, and I know it can be really overwhelming. I apologize if any of my content has contributed to that, but I'm hoping that uh, this video will kind of aid in, you know, calming everybody a little bit and, you know, figuring out truly which planner is gonna be the best for you. This is going to be a two-part series, and in the next part, I'm going to be going over planner FOMO, uh, but these two videos will be released at the exact same time, so as soon as you finish this video, you can head over and watch the next one if you feel so inclined. Without further ado, let's get started. So I have set up five steps here, but before doing any of that, the very first thing you wanna consider is your budget. And I feel like this is something that kind of gets, gets lost when we're thinking of what we want in a planner, because first and foremost, you have to be comfortable with the amount that you're spending on a planner. When it comes down to it, Anything can be a planner. If you absolutely must, you can use a sheet of paper or some sticky notes. So having a budget is very important to consider, okay? So once you have your budget, then you're going to move on to step number one, which is analyzing your past experiences. You're gonna be looking at what worked and what didn't. If you're new to the planner community and maybe you haven't tried a formal planner before or you're coming from a digital planner, that's totally fine. You can look at those things as well. Like what did you appreciate about digital planning that you like in a paper planner um, and what you know really bothered you about it and that's why you're moving type of thing. If you are familiar with planners, let's say you're in a Hobonichi like myself, uh, what worked and what didn't? Was the size too big, too small? Did you like having you know, the margins along the side? Did you wish you had more space? Did the quotes take up too much room? Do you wish your weeklies, monthlies, and dailies were all in the same spot? Um, how was the binding? You know, all these types of questions that can kind of help you answer um, what things really made planning fun for you and what things kind of made it more of a chore. And once you have those past experiences down, anything, that didn't work for you, you really want to take into consideration because I know for me personally, I sometimes convince myself that I can make a planner system work that hasn't in the past. And um, <laughs> long story short, that's not how it worked for me. Um, when you figure out that something didn't work for you, you should take that and you should respect it. You can understand that, you know, that didn't work for you and it's time to try something different. And maybe if your needs change, then you can you know reconsider that at a later date but really take into consideration what didn't work and i wouldn't recommend repurchasing a planner that hasn't worked for you in the past at least in some capacity okay if all the pages are blank maybe try something different number two a very important step is deciding what your planning style is and what your layout is going to look like. So as you guys know, planners usually offer a daily, a weekly, a monthly, or all three. And um, sometimes they off offer neither, okay? So, and that all comes down to the flexibility of the planner that you're purchasing. If you would like a planner that is more scheduled, more routined, then you're going to want to have a daily, weekly, monthly. Whereas if you're wanting flexible, a more day-free option, then you might only have a monthly uh, or none of them, okay? And I'll get into, I'll offer some examples later on. But once you have kind of understanding what type of planner you are, you also wanna look at your layout, okay? So you can be more task-oriented, which is things like a to-do list, or you could be more schedule-oriented, and that would be something like time blocking, or you could be neither. Maybe neither of the things work for you and all you want a planner for is to kind of track like memory keeping or your common placing. So these are all considerations. If you are looking at something with a daily, weekly, monthly, maybe you're looking at a Hobonichi or a Sterling Inc. If you're looking at just a monthly, maybe you're looking at the Hobonichi Day Free. If you're looking at none of those and you want the most flexibility you can, maybe you're looking at a bullet journal or a traveler's notebook. Those are two really good flexible systems that can be changed out when you decide that your needs are changing. I'm gonna pull up a traveler's notebook just to show you guys how that looks like. And I also have a day free here and a bullet journal as well, because as you can see, I have tried um, a multitude of things. 
So if you're brand new to the planner community, this is a traveler's notebook. It is elastic bound and they have different inserts to suit your different needs. I have a blank insert right now, but they have dot grid, they have lined, they have grid regular, and they also have uh, monthly and weekly inserts. So if you're looking for something super customizable, this might be a good option for you. If you're kind of liking the idea of customizability, but you'd rather it just be all in one place, then I recommend a bullet journal, okay? Also very flexible. The dot grid style um, ensures that you can uh, make any sort of spreads that you'd like, whether that be a monthly, weekly, or daily. And if you're looking for just a touch more structure, but still you want that freedom, this is the Hobonichi Techo Day Free. And at the beginning, it does come with uh, monthlies so you can kind of organize your month like that and then your dailies are completely blank so those are just some options of the more flexible uh, systems if you will and obviously uh, the more you get into structure then the more your freedom um, I'm not gonna say diminishes because it's not like that it's just more so um, everything has a place so you guys I'm sure are familiar with the weeks um, where you have your monthly and then your weekly and the Hobonichi cousin has all three month week and day so that is something that's gonna be really helpful for you and you're gonna be referencing your planning style throughout this whole experience okay uh, moving on to number three is going to be the size and portability. So not everybody is going to have the same perfect size. There are a lot of variables, even down to how big your handwriting is, how thick the pen that you're using is. Sorry guys, the audio got really weird, so I'm in voiceover mode, but pretty much all that I'm saying is that you have to figure out how much you're going to be writing and how frequently, right? So that's going to impact the size. If you think you might want something larger, you can go for an A5, like a Hobonichi Cousin, or even a B5. I know Sterling Inc. just released a B5. It is big, okay guys? And then if you're wanting something smaller, you're thinking more pocket passport, probably an A6, maybe a pocket traveler's notebook, maybe a pocket bullet journal. And you know, again, if your handwriting is smaller, that could be something that could really work for you. And another note is that for me personally, size is something that you don't have to get right the first time. If you found that your planner is too small, you can always have a supplement. And if you found that you bought one that's too big, you can always fill it with more ephemera. So don't worry, size can be negotiable. Um, number four, this one also is more nitpicky. This is about the paper and the binding. As you guys know, um, higher GSM makes the paper thicker and lower is the opposite. So we know the Tomoe River paper is mega thin and people like that because you can fit a lot of ephemera into uh, Hobonichi without it thickening up super humongo. <laughs> but if you don't like any of the ghosting or the bleed through, then you might prefer a higher GSM like the bullet journal I brought in earlier. You also want to think about the binding because maybe you don't want to be in a bound book. Maybe you want to be in a spiral or disc bound um, or even a rings planner. I know that rings has really kind of entered the scenes. It's not a system that I think would ever work for me personally, but I've seen loads of people liking it because you can always take out pages and put them back in um, and move things around. And it's like that's another type of flexibility that you wouldn't have with a bound planner. I was talking to one of my friends recently, my pen pal actually Addie mentioned that after seeing my video where I didn't like the micro perforated pages she said that's perfect for me because I might want to move around pages so again everybody will have um, their different needs in terms of binding as well so that's something to consider and number five you also want to think about extras that's everything outside of your major planning schedule um, style and all of that good stuff those are like trackers pockets etc you know I would even put aesthetic under there as well um, just all the other extra features that a planner could potentially offer you um, and again it you don't even need to want any extras that's totally fine too um, what you have to understand is that there is a planner out there for everybody 
but there is there does not exist a perfect planner. So um, you can find a planner that's going to meet almost every single one of your needs and there's still gonna be a couple there that you're like, oh, I wish this and I wish that. And that's okay too. So um, when you're thinking about extras, try not to get too nitpicky with it because that's where things get really frustrating is you, know, you spend all of your time looking for the 20% that you can't find. Meanwhile, you have 80% in a good planner um, and so that's what I would say for that and then um, I'm going to recommend something that I did in one of my other videos it's kind of an experiment uh, it's called the crap journal experiment <laughs> if you've seen my how to get back into bullet journal video I mentioned the crap journal and it's just a way for you to kind of block out the noise and figure out what your needs are from kind of a square one space so you buy yourself a little crap journal maybe you have one lying around maybe you're using sticky notes and throughout the week you just kind of observe how you're leaning towards your use what are you writing down what's the frequency um, and all that stuff and that can really help narrow down the type of planner that you're going to be using and that may also aid in um, keeping things under your budget because like I said things add up really quick and if you're focusing on the extras some of these planners that have the extras that have the covers that have the the bookmarks um, are quite expensive okay and um you know what it's whatever works for you there are, are some amazing budget planners from target from staples uh, that are perfectly lovely planners so um, i'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in my fomo video so uh, if you've liked this video and you're ready to move on to how to not feel the fomo then you can click my other video now and i'll see you in part two Bye bye